So my last video on Calvary actually did surprisingly well. It's actually getting quite a few views despite it being over a month old. And also seeing how my last tutorial video is doing so well too, I'd say it's about high time to do more of them. Hey, they're actually a lot of fun too. So last night I got a request in my comments of the Calvary video to do more Calvary tutorials and that's what I'm going to do today. Intros, they're cool, they're clean, they're great. They also keep your viewers retained in those first critical seconds of the video to keep them there saying, yes, I like to watch this video more, but it also projects a brand. And that's kind of the game of the name of the game here is that you're projecting a brand and YouTube intros and Twitch transitions are probably one of the easiest ways to do that. Part of your job is to project a brand and intros happen to be one of the easiest ways to do that. So today let's get into Calvary. Let's make an intro, basic, yes, but this will get you started on using Cavalry for your own stuff. If you like what you see here and you would like more of it, I stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we usually spend the first 30 minutes or so just chatting, talking about random stuff, and then get into a game afterwards. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, then feel free to join us. Link to everything will be down below. All right, so I'm in Cavalry, as you can obviously see here, and... From the looks of things, things will look a little, a little strange compared to some other motion graphics editors that you probably used. So I'll go over some major basics of how to use Calvary before we get into any, you know, graphic design motion graphics. So one of the biggest distinguishing factors or assets or whatever you want to call it um, with Calvary is that the timeline here is frame based. Now that's a little different compared to something like Vegas Effects, Apple Motion or After Effects where they use a more time code based um, timeline. Now there are several benefits to using a um, frame based timeline. It gives you greater control over where exactly frame keyframes will start and end. It's a little, it takes a little getting used to figuring out exactly where you want um, keyframes to go and how long, how long the distance will be the movie. But we'll get into a little bit more, I'll touch on a little bit more of it once we get into it. But overall, once you get used to uh, frame-based timelines, they are a lot easier to use than time code based timelines in my opinion. Um, you also got the viewport up here. Um, there is one thing that I will get into very shortly when it comes to the viewport. You got your tools to the side with um, primitive creators. Uh, primitive it basically is just a, is, is 3D modeling talk for a shape. That's basically what it is. It's just a basic shape that can be molded into many other forms. It's called a primitive in this kind of thing. You got your attribute editors. We have nothing here right now because we don't have anything um, set in here. You got your compositions and assets, um, which will appear up here. A composition, it creates one composition before you when you get into the program. Um, but as you create more compositions, they'll appear here. Um, and you also got your color tools. There's also the scene windows, everything like this. We'll get into the more majority of those in a second. But before I start anything here, I want to go to composition up here first, go to compositions and settings and change the FPS to 60. This will do a number of things. For one thing, if you already have stuff on the timeline, the timing of them will change with the composition if the composition's frame rate is changed. Um, for example, the um, old intro, which you didn't get to see, uh, didn't see here, uh, got to see in the last few videos. Um, the old intro used a, um, used uh, assets that, that were animated for 25 frames a second, but I changed halfway through the uh, making of that intro um, to 60 frames a second and that threw things off a little bit, which is why it's shorter than it needed to be, it was supposed to be. Um, but anyway, not the whipfire. So what I want to do is I can recreate that intro for you in Calvary. So I can go to my taskbar here and open up a file explorer. Uh, right, so I have everything that I want to use on my timeline already. So what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to go back to my composition, composition settings, and change the end frame a little bit. Give myself a little bit more room by bumping up to like 400 frames. 400, that gives me a little bit more room to work with what I'm doing here. So, so we have it on the frames here. So what, I what I'm going to do here is that basically what I'm going to do is that I'm going to animate. So I have several primitives here, I should mention. I have my main logo. I have the blue background, which is just a solid blue um, square, and then my green background, which is again is a solid square I made in Krita. Very basic stuff. 
um, not too hard to make. If you want, if you want some examples of how to make something like that logo like this, I do have a video on how to use Krita in a basic uh, capacity. So if you want to see more of that, link will be up above. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull back the blue, the green, and the logo itself back a little bit. So in Calvary, you have all these options here, and we're going to focus on the shape options for now. The fill, stroke, and mask is something that we do not need to worry about for the time being. Um, so you got position. So basically what this will do is that this will animate the position of the of the mini elements that you can find in here based on the X and Y axis axes. Um, X going up and down, Y going the other way, I think. I think that's what it is. Um, rotation. Um, the thing about I don't like about rotation is it only rotates on one or well it rotates basically what that does is just rotates the image. It just rotates. Scale is a little interesting. Um, scale is very um, more overcomplicated in Calvary than it is in say After Effects or Apple Motion in that it only it only scales on one axis at a time. So if you want to scale in uniformity, you need to make sure that your that the scale values throughout the entirety of its animation are 100% consistent. They cannot be off by a single little bit, otherwise the animation will be off by a little bit, which is why, you, which is sad because I wish they had allowed you to um, change it on the Z axis, where it would change both at the same time. Sad, but we got opacity, which will change the opacity of the image. Uh, blend mode, there are several, a lot of them. Uh, we'll keep it for normal for now. Deformers, don't worry about that. Filters, don't worry about that. Motion blur, don't worry about that. Shrink, don't worry about that. Oh, did not use that. So those are the basic uh, modifiers or tools or values you need to learn about. So for the blue, I'm going to pull it back on the x-axis a little bit. Um, alternative, you can click up here and hold shit. Oh, wrong button. Eat the blue. You can hold shift and it will do the same thing, keeping it on a simple uh, uniform line. Do the green, same thing with the green and do the same thing with the logo. So you may notice right now that we have a white background. We do not want that. So we, we want it to be transparent. So when we export it, this white background, everything behind it does not appear. So you go down here and use check click the set composition background alpha to zero. So what this is going to do is then again, it remove everything that's at the base level of the animation, leaving only what we want in there left in there, leaving this background um, checkerboard background. Again, I mentioned in the creative video in creative software when a checkered background always indicates transparency. It means that everything in front of this does not appear on top of this. It just means there's nothing behind there. It's just blank space and everything that when, when put into layers and in, say a video editing software like Vegas Pro or Premiere Pro, it will show up the thing that it will have this transparency in the file, leaving everything behind the file you know, in the video file in the thing. Uh, whenever, whenever I inevitably do a video on video editing and how to edit a video, which is kind of in the work, I'm actually <laughs> working on getting some assets for that, uh, some props for that. I'll go into more greater detail about this. But for now, just remember that the checkerboard background always indicates transparency. So we got this. So I want to animate this green primitive first. So I'm going to go down into my timeline editor. Oh, I'm going to do that zoom so I'm gonna start my frame at zero and I'm gonna take the blue uh, I'm gonna go over to my uh, attribute editor so it's like the position click on this uh, button here that says shift shift position to zero in the center of your composition that will add a keyframe move my composition over to uh, over to 20 oh let me do that set the animation to 20 and then just pull it forward Boom. And when we play it back, it plays. Um, so it animates perfectly fine. It's fine. It's very linear fashion the way it is animated right now. And when we get into the graph editor here in a minute, I'll explain more how we make it look a lot better than it is right now. So the blue image, we want to animate that too. However, we want it to appear as the green primitive is halfway through its animation. So we go to the blue, add a keyframe, move this down here to when the green primitive is just on the side or it is just where it needs to be. 
move it over here. Let's set that to zero. Boom. See, now we got that. The last part of this animation comes when the thing is where this 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 is thing. I'm very good at explaining things. We go to the logo, add a keyframe, move it forward a few frames. Let's just set that to zero. I gotta remember I get to set that to zero. And boom. Now the logo comes in after everything else. There you go. Now here's where things get a little weird. Um, now that we have now because we're working in a in a frame based work environment with the timeline, um, we need to kind of get an idea of how long uh, we want we, we want this to stay here for a minimum of two seconds, but no longer than five. And how do you figure that out when you're using frames as a way to go by rather than a time code? Well, as it happens, five or ten frames constitutes as one second 10 frames one second so if we go to here one hold on one doesn't show one okay there it's kind of hard to see and i hope i'll stop it right there so i'll try it again one so that was 10 frames 10 frames constitutes as one second so if we wanted it to last five seconds, we want it to be 50 frames past what our last our last keyframe was. This is 27, so we want that to be want that to be 77 frames in total. So we go back over to here, move this forward a little bit, scoot it forward a little bit, and then just set a t set a keyframe again for it to be consistent across the whole thing. So as 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 the coordinates for the actual axis is 1442.000. We want that to set we want that f value for everything. So we're going to set this over here. Hold on. Set a keyframe again. Move this forward a little bit. Another keyframe. And do the same thing for the other two down here. All right, playing that back again. All right, so the animation doesn't last too long, but that's all you really need at a bare minimum when making the intro. So you may notice that you may have already noticed that it's very linear in the fashion that it's animated. It does not look particularly good, so we can rectify that by going to the graph editor. So the graph editor is very, in very simple terms, a a graph on a video motion graphics editor is basically a graph of speed um, where it's right now currently set to a very linear way as doing it. So this, this will increase, it's will go this, this, this line, depending on its curve will determine how fast or how slow the track will be. So if you set this to a Bezier, if you set the keyframe interpolation to Bezier, oh, Bezier, and then just drag this out like this. Drag this out a little bit more like this. And then we play it back. Did you notice it there? I'll play it again. The green line made it a much more drastic um, movement. It was like, it was like, like this, like that. That's what we want. So we're going to go back to the blue, change our keyframes back to Bezier, drag it out, drag it out. And you can also you, you, uh, click in your mouse button to move this around freely, by the way. It makes it so much easier. Uh, go back to Proto One New, keyframe interpolation, Bezier, keyframe interpolation, Bezier, drag it out, drag it out. And then boom, watch it back again. Looks so much better, does it? Now, we did kind of do a little bit of messing up here because I dragged this out a little bit on an awkward angle. 
there's no really easy way to do that i wish there was an easy way to drag it out but that's just the way it is so i'm going to take a quick second do the same thing to the last few key, cut two key. all right once you have it done you can save it and be done with that but now we have to take it down to the exporting and this is where things get a little interesting so go up to file render manager so you want the format you want to go back to format and go to prores prores 4444 that's very important here go to output and save it wherever you think you want to save it um it's just a, depends on where it's more convenient for you to save things um make sure that you have your end frame uh, keyframe range or play it will say, default to keep start and end but if you want to export a specific range of your animation you can do that um padding i keep it at five i keep the render engine at OpenGL. that will keep things rendering fast and smooth And once you have everything up, set a render queue, and it'll start rendering. And there you have it. You can use it as a YouTube intro, or you can use it as a Twitch transition for OBS. It can be used for a multitude of things. Just remember that because it's in ProRes, the video editor that you use may not immediately recognize the alpha channel. So usually what I would do is I would go to whatever video editor I'm using. I would go into the properties of the clip and change the uh, alpha channel to multiply to dirty that will mean that we'll tell it okay so there's transparency in this file this needs to be shown does not always work but it's a lot better than having anything else um, but yeah you can use this for anything and yeah i have a lot of fun i'd love to do more of these videos these are actually a lot of fun to do um all those things considered so if you want to see more Cal calvary tutorials please feel free to comment them down below i'd be happy to do them they're actually a lot of fun i love explaining these kind of things um but if you also like to see when to join the larger community at hand, the Spurgian Empire, the glorious empire of our fa fabulous nation of Spurgians, but not really, it's just a fantastic nation, then join us. The Discord link will be down below. If you want to join me on, on Twitch as well, link will that be over there? Obviously, you're on YouTube, so I don't need to, Twitch to link that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining me for the video, and everyone, I'll see you guys next time.